Okay. All right. Well, last time we were talking, what were we talking about? We were talking about reactions, right? Did we finish that? By the way, we talked about single replacement reactions, right? We talked about double replacement reactions. We talked about combustion reactions. Is everybody happy with those three types of reactions? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about putting numbers with it. You see, so many times in chemistry, we like to say, um, okay, well, how much acetylsalicylic acid can we produce or aspirin, right? Do we want 14 grams? Do we want 138 grams? What do we want to produce, right? Because we kind of want to know what we need. We kind of need to know how to back calculate the chemicals so we can order and so on and so forth, all right? So when we look at this problem here, I want to know how much of each product can be produced if you completely burn 17.8 grams of pentane. All right. Now, the first typo that I've got here, and I hope the only one, is I have to tell you what pentane is. It is C5H12. All right. And on an exam, I would have typed that in, right? I would have caught that during the proofread. So the first thing that you have to do in any chemical equation is you have to get an equation that represents the chemistry that is a happening. Now, the first thing is we're going to have pentane plus oxygen. How do I know it's pentane? Well, it says right there in the problem, use pentane. How do I know it's oxygen? It says, well, we got the combustion of oxygen. All right. That's going to give us what two products? CO2 and H2O, always, right? Carbon dioxide and water. So the first step in working any chemical problem is to get a reasonable chemical reaction. Is everybody happy? Okay, the second step is to balance. We got five carbons over here. We got to have five carbons here. Twelve carbons here. Six times two is twelve. I mean, twelve hydrogens, twelve hydrogens. We have five times two is ten, plus another six is sixteen. So eight times two is sixteen. Now, what have I done? I've got an equation that represents the chemistry we're interested in. I've also now what is called mass balanced. It means five carbons on the left, five on the right. These little numbers that I've put here, this six, this five, this eight, and these ones are called stoichiometric coefficients. The whole title of this chapter is stoichiometric calculations, which means we're going to be using those numbers to do calculation. Here's what we got. We got 17.8 grams of this stuff, all right, and I want to know how much of this could be produced and how much of this could be produced, okay? Now, the first thing that you have to do is you have to find out what reactant is limiting. In other words, which one is going to be used up first? So which one is that? Is that the Pentane, or is that the oxygen? And then how can you tell? Well, let's give an, an easier example. This right here is propane, it's 3,3-H8, propane. And in the barbecue grill, that's going to react with oxygen. Which one will be used up first? Propane. The propane will, right? I mean, doesn't that just what common sense tells you? You, you get uh, everybody together, ready for a cookout, you open a beer, your wife says, go outside, light the grill, everything, and then what happens? You run out of propane, right? It won't happen when it's just you and your wife together when there's no time limit. No, eight people's on the way, okay? What's that mean? That means that any calculation you do has to stem from the limits and ridges. So it would have to stem from the propane. That's what controls the reaction. It's what's used up first. Not once has Bonnie ever went inside and said, we're out of oxygen in the backyard. The barbecue's off. Think about that. All right. So that means that you do not have to worry about how much oxygen is available to you. Now, how can you pick that up in a problem? If there's only one mass given, then you assume that the other thing, there's an excess. So if you have to bring it in on an 18-wheeler, it doesn't matter. You will not run out of oxygen. That's important because... Every calculation must start from the limiting reagent, the thing that runs up first. That's what controls the reaction. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. 17.8 grams of C5H12. Now, what do these numbers mean? The 1, the 8, the 5, and the 6? 
That means moles, okay? And it could also mean molecules, but in this particular case, it's moles. So how are we going to get from grams to moles? No, no, that, that would, um, if we had like the number of atoms, that's called Avogadro's number. What are you going to use here? Okay, one mole on the top, Bella wants to do, one mole of C5H12 divided by what? C5H12. 72. Now, where does the 72 come from? Periodic table, right? This mess right here came from the periodic table. Now, how did I get that? Just a quickie review. Well, carbon weighs 12, so it's 12 times 5, plus another 12. Right, I added up what's called the molecular weight. Okay, look here. Now, you want to do CO2 first or water first? It doesn't matter. Tell me. CO2. CO2. John's picking CO2. So, what is my ratio between pentane and CO2? Okay. So, there's going to be one mole of C5H12 per five moles of CO2. All right. This right here, this step is the crux of the chapter and how it's so named, stoichiometric ratio. Why this is important is these are the ratios between here and here. So this is why we spent so long on balancing equations and we spent so long on the moles and this and that. It's because, take note, if that five, if you screwed up and made that a four, you're going to throw off the entire problem. All right. Now, one mole of CO2 weighs how much from the periodic table? You get 44. 16 plus 16 plus another 12. CO2, 44. Okay. So 44 times 5 divided by 72 times 17.8 equals. 54.4 grams of CO2. Okay, So right here we can change this now to 54.4 grams of CO2 would be produced if you burned exactly that much pentane. Are we happy? Okay. Now I want to know how much water could be produced. Well, what do I have to start with there? 17.8 grams of pentane. Now, why do I have to start with 17.58 grams of pentane? I mean, 17.8 grams of pentane? Because that's the limiting reagent. Remember, every single thing has to originate from the limiting reagent. All right, we've already did it. 72 grams of pentane for one mole of pentane. All right, now look up there now. Help me with the ratio between pentane and water. Six moles of water. Now where is that going to go? The top or the bottom? The top. Six moles of water. Now the reason they're telling me that is because if you put water down here, that deal ain't going to cancel. So that's no good. All right, and then uh, one mole of C5H12. Now, the reason I chose to put that on the bottom was because it will cancel. Now, one mole of water weighs 18 grams. All right, what's your first name? Liz. Leslie? Liz. Liz. Liz, can you be my periodic table girl? I'm doing this stuff in my head. So I'm going to put an extra thing on her to be sure that whatever numbers I randomly put up here makes sense, right? All right. So now 18 times 6 uh, divided by 72 times 17.8 equals 26.7 grams of water. So if I was to burn this liquid pentane, I would produce 26.7 grams of water from the production, right? And we did that last time in here, right? We took a cigarette lighter, we held it up to a piece of glass, and we watched it fog up. Okay. Now,